Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. Yesterday I had a conversation with a long-term business partner of mine. We actually played football against one another. He played for Notre Dame, I played for the University of Pittsburgh. So we go back way far. And his daughter is a couple years older than my daughter. She was a champion pole vaulter, University of Southern California. Works out, completely ripped. Does personal training now. And I started kicking around with him the information that's coming out more and more every day that saturated fat is not a cause of heart disease. Now, that's been embedded in everybody's mind that it is the cause of heart disease. And I have no clue what it's going to take to root this out of people's minds. It certainly won't come from the government or from the medical community. It's going to have to be done on an individual basis. So you as an individual are going to have to embrace this information and use it to your advantage because you will not get this advice from your physician. In fact, your physician, if you even bring it up, will admonish you for even discussing this idea that saturated fat is not the killer that it's suspected to be. So all this leaks over not only into the health community or the idea of what's healthy to eat, but it also leaks into the diet for working out and exercising, what you should do to help your body. So he's been on this diet as of high for probably a good 20 years, and he got his daughter on it way back in high school, which helped her do the incredible performances that she did, and it just supplies energy at the fastest and best rate, particularly when you get adapted to it after several months. So she's doing personal training now, and she was brought in as a consultant to talk to some athletes in an organization where they did have some people giving dietary advice. And we kicked that around a bit. And it was standard fare. Start the day off with cereal, grains, and then more grains at dinner, some soy. I mean, it, it, totally clueless. These people are clueless. The personal trainers have no idea. N none of them have any background or training in this stuff. Anybody, anybody can become a personal trainer. You certainly don't have to have a PhD to become a personal trainer. In fact, very few have any degrees at all. They just say, I'm going to be a personal trainer. And they read this junk on the internet and they read some books all saying the same thing. What's the optimal diet for performance? Of course, it's laden with carbohydrates. This has been the belief system for a long, long time. And then that's the information they give to the people they're counseling. So they don't get any results. So his daughter told this one individual that you're going to have no luck with that diet at all in improving your performance. Because you can't. It can't work. It can't do anything because it's so laden in carbohydrates. And you can't build muscle. You can't create endurance on that. It's just the worst possible thing that you could do. But unfortunately, they don't know it. So as a society, we're mired in this sea of misinformation, both in respect to health and with respect to what kind of diet we should eat to help us with our exercise program. And I don't know how it's going to end. I'm going to do my part to just keep pushing the information out there. And of course, I can stand here before anyone and I have the biochemistry. I have the knowledge of the science of how and why this stuff works. And I can explain it. And it's just, it's beyond me, particularly in the health aspect of this stuff, how they keep pushing grains, fruits, and vegetables when there's no science to support it whatsoever. And they argued that there is. I'll take any of them on, anytime, anywhere, any place. And we'll see who can come up with the actual scientific data supporting the argument that carbohydrates are not good for you. So that's the story. We've got to keep fighting, got to keep spreading the message. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.